All right, let's continue reading a little bit of the documentation. So, uh, the filter graph manager is a calm object that controls the filters in the filter graph. It before, performs many functions, including the following, coordinating state changes among the filters. Right, so it's, co it's the coordinating element among the filters. Establishing a reference clock. There has to be one, only one reference clock for everything to be synchronized. Communicating events back to the applications, I'm sorry, to the application. Providing methods for applications to build the filter graph. A reference clock. All of the filters in the graph use the same clock called a reference clock. The reference clock ensures that all the streams are synchronized. That's okay. Next. About media types. Is there a diagram? Okay, let's see what they say here. So, because direct show is modular, it requires a way to describe the format of the data at each point in the filter graph. For example, consider AVI playback. Data enters the graph as a stream of RIFF chunks. These are parsed. I don't remember what RIFF stands for. We can look it up. RIFF. RIFF. Resource interchange file format. Generic file container format for storing data in tagged chunks. All right. So, for example, consider AVI playback data enters the, the graph as a stream of R of RIF chunks. These are parsed. Maybe there is uh, in the Wikipedia, maybe there is a diagram. Oh, there is a diagram. RIF info tags. RIF info tags, no, these are specific tags. What does the file look like? All right, next. So these are parsed into video and audio streams. The video stream consists of video frames, which are probably compressed. After decoding, the video stream is a series of uncompressed bitmaps. Oh, after decoding, the video stream is a series of uncompressed bitmaps. The audio stream goes through a similar process. Media types, how Direct Joe represents formats. The media type is a universal and extensible way to describe digital media formats. When two filters connect, they agree on a media type. The media type identifies what kind of data the upstream filter, now the terminology of upstream downstream, downstream means to the right of and upstream means to the left of. Right? So you can look at the filters in a filter graph as a as a waterfall, as a cascade of waterfalls. So the water falls here, and the water falls here, and the water falls here. So upstream is to the left, and downstream is to the right. That's the way it is. So the media type identifies what kind of data the upstream filter will deliver to the downstream filter. Right, the delivery is always to the right. Is always it's not correct to say to the right because I can drag a filter to the left, right? I could have the arrow pointing to the left. So you can't say left and right. File, let's take, right? You, you could do this. So what does it mean? Who is to the left of whom? So left and right are not, are not correct, are not consistently correct. So we, we say upstream, downstream, which means the, the direction of the arrow. The ar direction of the arrow is downstream. So <laughs> this is downstream and downstream. So, so the media type identifies what kind of data the upstream filter will deliver to the downstream filter. Right? It's always the upstream filter that's delivering data to the downstream filter. 
So what kind of data is, it, is going to be delivered is described by what's known as a media type. And the physical layout of the data. Okay. If two filters cannot agree on a media type, they will not connect. And we saw this when we tried to connect, right, if I, if I disconnect these and I try and connect these directly, it's going to, it's going to use this guy to connect them. Let's just add something else like an audio compressor, GSM. And let's try and connect, let's try and connect this to this. Well, you cannot connect because a GSM, it's a compressor, it, it doesn't know what it, its output is because there's no input. It's a transform, it compresses. So we need to connect something to its left so that it will know what its output is. And now we talk to the AVI, now, now the AVI knows what we're telling it and now the ASF and everything should work right. So this is actually going to be a compressed audio stream. So we're going to be writing compressed audio to the to the file. So let's test it. One, two, three. This is compressed audio to the file. So let's test it. One, two, three. Okay, and how big is it? It's 803 it's to the file. It's almost one megabyte and it's three seconds and if you remember previously that this file was eight megabytes the same length. You can play with all these compressors you can really achieve incredible results with good compressors. That's not what we're talking about right now so if they don't agree they will not connect. They will not agree one one scenario in which they don't agree is is when it's an unknown. If I disconnect and I try, let's try and connect. No, if I try to connect this to this, no, I don't know. I don't. This the the, the upstream pin. This is called an a pin. The out the, the output pin doesn't know what its media type is. It doesn't doesn't know. So when asked, it says I don't know. So when I try and connect these two pins, the right pin, the input pin, asks the output pin, what's your type? The output pin says, I don't know. So the input pin, all right, so I cannot agree with you, obviously, on, on your output type. Also, if we try and use a video compressor for the audio, right, let's take one of these compressors and try and have the audio compress with video that's also not going to work. They cannot agree. These filters cannot agree in a connection. Verify type compatibility of input pin and output pin. No combination of intermediate filters could be found to make the connection. That's good. Okay. So for some applications you will never have to worry about media types. In file playback for example direct show handles all of the details. Other kinds of applications may need to work directly with the med with media types. Whatever, media types are defined using the a the active movie media type structure. This structure contains the following information. I, I right now I'm just going to skip it. This is a check media type method implementation of a filter. For example, a filter might use the following code to check a media type. This is this is a general e example of how, right this is the inside code of a filter. Now you might think, "Oh my god, I we barely understand how to build a graph and I'm already talking to you about the implementation of a filter." Okay, so you, you really don't need to understand. I mean, there's two levels of direct show programming. You either build graphs or you build filters. So, no, it's good to know, but you might not have to build a filter. All right, so, so this is the check media type that is implemented by a filter. So the graph manager, when connecting two pins, is actually invoking in the process the check media type Right, a filter might use the following code to check a media type. Um, so, I, I, 
who who is invoking check media type it might be that um i don't remember when we connect it might be that the left pin the output pin is invoking the check media type of the of the input pin or it might be the graph manager but let's see in any case so check media type receives a pointer to a media type here is the active movie media type so if the pointer to the media type is null then return e pointer that's an error value error pointer com right check the major type we are looking for video so if pmt major type let's look for a second let's look at what they say the active movie media type so the media type has a, a major type a subtype and a format block the major type the major type is a is a global unique ID that defines the overall category of data. Major types include video, audio, unparsed bytes, stream, but <laughs> basically video and audio. Now the subtype is another global unique ID which further defines the format. For example, within video major type, there is a sub there is there are subtypes for RGB 24, 32 UYVY and so forth. Within audio there is PCM audio, MPEG-1 payload and others. The subtype provides more information than the major type but it does not define everything about the format. For example video subtypes do not define the image size of the frame or the frame rate. These are defined by the format block described below. So the third parameter of or the third field of the active movie media type is the format block. The format block is a block of data that describes the format in detail. But let's skip all this. I'm, I'm going to skip this block. Okay, whatever. Uh, they just wanted to make a point out of the, the concept of the media type. So, about media samples and allocators. Oh, there is no diagram. Maybe... Um, I, I need a diagram to discuss it. How hardware devices participate in filter in the filter graph? No diagram, so I'm gonna skip it. Okay, so back to let's go back up one topic. The filter graph and its components, and then one step up again. All right, building the filter graph graph building components intelligent connect intelligent connect the term intelligent connect covers a set of algorithms that the filter graph manager uses to build all or part of a filter graph basically the idea of intelligent connect is when i say right button click and render the graph manager knows how to build the graph it guesses it sort of guesses how it's proper to build the graph. So that's Intelligent Connect. Overview of graph building. So we already saw this function, right? We allocated a filter graph. That's good. We're almost out of time. Next, Intel again, Intelligent Connect. All right, so again, we'll go back up one level and I guess another level. And that was building the graph data flow in the filter graph and I guess this will have to really do in the next lesson right good good diagrams all right so let's stop here and we'll continue this in the next lecture thank you very much and goodbye